I've got 102. So let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to take a moment to introduce myself. I'm Doug Dean, owner and managing partner at Schaeferitz and Dean. Uh, we are, as a firm, always trying to find ways to give value to the real estate agent community that we serve. And one way we do that is with our monthly business builder speaker series. This is the third Wednesday every month at 1 p.m. We bring in a different guest speaker with a topic that we think is going to be helpful and valuable to you, uh, our real estate agent community. Um, we know that you're busy and we appreciate you giving us your time today. To make the most out of your time, we encourage you to ask questions and participate utilizing the chat box. Before I introduce this month's speaker, I want to let you know to mark your calendars for the third Wednesday next month, which is September 21st, 1 to 2 p.m. We're going to have Whitney Brennan uh, speak about 10 IR, the Internal Revenue Code, 1031 Tax Deferred Strategies. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce Hutch Marone, real estate a, uh, professional, agent partner, leading the EXP Living in Atlanta, Georgia group. Learn how to make money in less time. Hutch, thank you for being our guest today. I'm going to turn it over to you, and you should be able to share your screen now. There it is. Thanks, Doug. I'm going to just let's see if I can pull this up real quick. You guys all see my screen now? I do. Thank you. All right. Perfect. So, Doug, yep, thanks for uh, having me on. I am uh, not just a guest speaker, I also do business with Doug. So, uh, and have uh, had great experiences with the law firm. So, appreciate that, Doug, that you and your team always take care of me, my clients, and my closing. Really appreciate that. Thank you, Hutch. You're what we call an FOF, and that means a friend of the firm, and we are uh, delighted to have you as somebody that we have the opportunity to work with. Thank you, Hutch. I also, I also want to note the dry sense of humor. That, that is just fantastic. I never know what's coming up next when you're saying something. There is no body cues or tone of voice cues for me to anticipate anything. So I, I'm, I'm listening every time you speak, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. And well, you should. Every once in a while, I'll say something memorable. <laughs> By contrast, everybody, I am far more expressive. I'm Italian and uh, I tend to use my hands a lot. Please do not take offense if I do. I've taken all sorts of public speaking training uh trainer train the trainer training and yet they I, unless i physically tie my hands to my person they just move on their own they just will start so uh don't let that distract you from any of the material as doug mentioned my name's hutch marone i've been doing this for a little over eight years now consistently earning uh over 10 million dollars or generating over 10 million dollars in sales every year and that keeps going up um I'm a partner in Living in Atlanta, Georgia group, which is a small group of uh, an EXP. We're one of the top groups in all of Atlanta for EXP, though. Prior to joining EXP, which I just did a few months ago, and uh, launching our partner in uh, Living in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, I was with regional leadership, Keller Williams, and for the Southeast region. And uh, which, in case you don't know, is one of the, well, is Keller Williams' top region in the country. Uh, prior to that, 12 years with McDonald's USA in field operations. In my 20s, probably the, uh, the career path I get the most questions about. I was uh, the youngest, highest ranking gaming official in the country, um, which basically means I was a casino detective. So yeah, that was fun in my 20s, by the way. Um, my priorities, basically faith, fitness, and family. I lead a men's church group, attend church regularly, get involved in community events. Um, fitness buff, soccer is my sport, play it regularly to this day. Um, although my knees and ankles aren't necessarily happy with that after a few surgeries. 
And uh, I have three kids. I live up in Alpharetta. Uh, I have three children. Uh, one of them's 23 and the other ones are nine and seven and they just had some birthdays. So I call them all the Maroon Nuggets. So even the 23 year old, they're the, all the nuggets to me. And if you have kids, you know what I mean, right? They never fully grow up in your eyes. You always think of them as your children. Uh, today, we're basically going to be talking about, so my thing is uh, I've been helping agents uh, through a coaching program and a training um, business that I run. I've been hel helping agents for years to leverage technology in their business. But before your eyes glaze over and everything, just know because I'm an, a an active agent, these are not theoreticals. I teach you what you need to know that has practical application for your business and uh, actually just helps you earn more money, right? So my, my sole focus is on teaching agents things that they can do that make them more money and save them time, right? So that's basically more touches to your database, more deepening your relationship with the people you know and saving time at the same time. How do we automate a lot of those touches, right? Uh, technology will never replace the human touch. That's one of the main objectors I get from people. Oh, I don't, you know, that, that I don't need to, I don't need a, a CRM. I don't, I don't need the computer. I've got my phone. I meet with people. Technology is not meant to replace you meeting with people. Technology is not meant to um, replace that phone call, but it can help you be more intentional uh, for sure. It can help you save you time by making some of those touches on its own. So what we're going to talk about is, uh, and I've started already, right, is why have an organized database of people you know, and what should you know about those people? And, and more importantly, what should you know and how do you leverage it in your business? So why have an organized database of people? Your database is your most significant asset in the real estate business. Really, it, this applies to all of sales, right? If you have a multi-million dollar business as far as sales go, but you do not have a list of your sphere and the, your past clients, your present clients, your potential future clients, you have nothing that is actually of value, right? If everything's in your head, there's not a lot of value to somebody else in what's in your head, not unless you can put it on paper, so to speak. There is intentionality, okay? And so I'm, whether it's in a CRM or a spreadsheet, right? You're able to leverage that list of people, that information uh, with greater intentionality. And what I mean by that is if you run your business based on what you remember to do that day, you, even if you're operating at a high level, even if you're happy with your sales, you are likely missing out on some sales. I know agents well who literally run their business based on what they remember during the course of the day. There are agents, I know, I know an agent right now, she's doing about year to date, she's at $14 million in sales. She has no organization whatsoever, no processes. There's no automation in her life, right? She literally runs it off of her phone, which when you first hear that, you say, well, geez, that's, I mean, $14 million. I'd be happy to, with that, right? I mean, that sounds great. Who needs, who needs intentionality? Who needs routines and systems? But I ask you this, if I offered you another million dollars, in sales, right? Would you turn it down? Is there anybody on this call that would turn down another million dollars, right? But in essence, by rejecting the use of a CRM or uh, you know any sort of organizational system, in essence, that's what she's doing. Because the increase in sales from having a system is roughly 20%, right? So that's $2.8 million in sales that she's leaving on the table. Anybody want to throw out what 3% of 2.8 million is? Throw it out there. Come on, I know we all know how to multiply 
everything by 3% because we're agents, right? The one piece of math we know. What's, what's 14 million times 20%, right? Times 3%. 2.8 times 3. Come on, somebody participate. I'll wait you out. You know, I don't know that I can. My math skills have gone down over the years, uh, Hutch, but I'm pretty sure I could put a calculator on it. Were we talking 14 million at 20%? 20% increase, right? 10% would be 1.4 and double that would be 2.8 million. And what's the agent's 3%? So 3% of 2.8 million, what's that? 1% uh, of uh, 2.8 million. $84,000. There you go. I was going to get there. Beat me to it. Thank you, Michael. 84,000 dollars So what's the agent's three percent? Three percent of 2.8 million. dollars So if there is anybody on this call who does not know what they would do with another $84,000, you just give it to me. I'll give you my number. Give it to me. I'll figure out what to do with it. But in essence, that's what she's doing, right? And she's just, I've known her for a long time. She's a great agent, but she does not want routines, systems. Her personality is such that she's very anti that. And she wants to run it off of, you know, everything off of her phone. So when she's driving by a neighborhood, that's what sparks her memory of calling somebody. So she might not have called that person in six months, right? That person may have referred two or three people to other agents in that time, or just told other people, yeah, I don't really know anybody when they were looking for an agent, okay? But it, with regular touches, she had more of an opportunity to grab some of those referrals. And that's where your increased sales comes from. The time savings comes from the automation, okay? So Moving to a spreadsheet, obviously far better than having nothing. Choosing a CRM, all right, something like uh, a KV Core. If you're with KW, it's Command. If you're with EXP, it's KV Core. Pretty much all of the brokerages have a free CRM that operates at a high enough level that you can use it in your business to do simple tasks. And we're going to talk about some of those simple tasks later on. But what I want you to do, I want you to take five minutes right now, grab a piece of paper, grab your notes on your phone. I want you to take five minutes to think about what one main thing you could do if you were to increase your sales and your commission revenue by 20%. What does a 20% increase in your sales and your commission mean to your family? What does it mean to, if you have children, what does that extra money mean to your children? All right, I don't want you to think about, you know, a new car, a new pair of shoes, all right? Those are the things that make us happy temporarily. Eventually that new car smell goes away. Eventually those shoes, they get stuck. I want you to think about what an extra 20% would do to, to change the life of you and your family. If you're new to real estate, if you have um, no sales right now, right? Or, or very low sales, what would one additional $10,000 commission mean to you? What would you do with an additional $10,000? Now in practical terms, I do understand as you write, that what you know, ten thousand dollars. You might be at a point in your life right now where the only thing you can think of is, Hutch. If I make ten thousand dollars more, you know, I'm just going to pay bills. I got bills. Totally understand that. So that some of us are are really, you know, we need that ten grand to pay off bills. I want you to imagine how much stress will be that you'll let go if you had that $10,000, right? You could just pay those bills that you've been worrying about, what that would feel like. So I'm gonna give you a couple more minutes just to jot something down. And I want you to jot it down 
and I want you to hold on to it. Because that's why you should organize. This is going to be your reason for getting your sphere organized. Now, you shouldn't be seeing unedited XP, uh, EXP slides. Are you still seeing that? Yes, I was going to say, do you have a, uh, I'm not sure that we're seeing the right there you go. for it there. I'm so sorry. Does it say what would a 20% increase in sales? Yes, yes, now? That looks, that's better. Thank you, sir. My apologies. I had on, I had obviously had unedited slides that I used to, to sure, share. Just, just the wrong PowerPoint, but we got the right one now. This is what you missed. There's me. <laughs> There's our topics for today. Here's what I talked about. And there we go. There's where we're at right now. Would anybody like to share, uh, and I'd love to hear it, what a 20% increase in sales, 20% increase in your commission, what it would do for you? Would anybody like to give us a little share here? I would like to. Um, this is Deetra Moore. I would use it to remodel my home. Perfect. Would you would that, that make you feel better to have some things remodeled that you've been waiting? To yes, do? yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a bathroom like that. I'll be honest with you, right? I've been holding off. That bathroom's been bothering me for about five years now, and I keep saying I, I got to get to that bathroom. I mean, I, it, 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 at this point, I cringe when I go in there because it's just a constant reminder. It really needs to be done. So I'm with you there. Anybody else? I'll sure. share. I would end up taking some of the financial pressure off of my husband. There you go. There you go. A lot of people in that same boat, Bonnie. Michael, I think you were going to speak. Yes, I was. For me, it would be more travel and more recreation. And I would put a little bit of it back into my business. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, reinvestment is always great, but travel, you like to travel is travel is travel something you do and you'd like to do more of, or is it something that is more of a, you just haven't been, but it's something you really want to do. Just haven't been. I normally do it on a regular basis, but uh, just haven't been lately. Perfect. So all great reasons. Um, when I, you know, I've done this exercise a hundred times, and I can tell you uh, that many of the reasons uh, that people have are are you know there's there's about five buckets of them. But I, I love the fact that you guys it wasn't just a purse or a new pair of shoes like I asked you not to do. It is it's something that will um, ground you with you know like really more fulfilling right i mean that emotion of knowing that you were able to help your husband out bonnie for example or you know michael or you know deploying your money um you know standing on a mountaintop somewhere you know and and looking out over a beautiful sunset right or or a beach whichever my thing's a beach my buddy always invites me to go hiking he's like i love these you know isn't this a great waterfall i'm like dude it took us like two hours. We basically climbed or scaled the side of a mountain. I can't stop heavy breathing to see the sunset. I'm like, I don't want to Like, you take a picture of the sunset. I'll take a picture of my feet at the beach. That's, we'll just trade photos. You go do your thing. But yeah, but just whatever, you know, whatever you're into, um, you know, having that travel, the remodel. I mean, I, I can personally right now, um, associate with remodeling because I have a space that it just bothers me that it's not done. should have been done a long time ago. And honestly, it's just me not getting around to it. Um, kind of like builders who live in a house that's not as fixed up as the homes they're building, right? I'm a real estate agent. You know, I tell people all the time what they, the projects that, that they could do to, you know, net more on their home sale. And yet here I am with a project that I know that if I listed my home tomorrow, it would work against me not having that bathroom done. But, you know, welcome to the real world, right? So uh, the second topic I wanted to address is what 
should you know about the people you know and why, okay? So just as importantly as the what, there's the why. Now, I know, I know that some of you are looking at this first one and saying, come on, Hutch, really? First and last name, here is why. Is there anybody on this call who in their phone has name, a first name followed by emoji? Hutch, smiley face, sad face, angry face, art. Now with a name like Hutch, you could probably get away with that. But what if the name is Michael? Michael, smiley face, angry face, heart, taco. Which Michael is that? Right? How, how is that helping you out and communicating with that? You might not even remember who that person is. You have no last name, right? My daughter's phone, my 23-year-old phone is just, she has contacts in her phone that are just emojis. I'm like, how do you even know who that is? She's like, I don't know. I met him at a party. The emojis meant something at the time, but now I forget who that guy is or that girl is. And I'm like, what is going on? So first and last name, it's really hard to, um, to market to people in the way that they're going to respond best to if you don't really know anything about them other than their first name. A mobile phone number, okay? Please do not let yourself off the hook with an office number, okay? So if you have an office number for somebody, there is no sending text messages. Texting automation is key. You can't text to an office line. And let's face it, have you really put in effort into that relationship if you just have the office number? I mean, it pretty much says it all about your relationship with that person, right? I just have their office number. In other words, they've got, you know, they're Heisman in you, right? They, they got their hand out, they've got you at a distance. So all that means is you have a little work to do there. But, but I challenge you on this, right? I'm going to say this a couple of times. Have you ever asked? When I'm up in front of a room full of agents and I'm teaching them, one of the main objections I get from agents is, but that's what they gave me. I know, but did you ask? Like, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? Oh, you know what? I think I only have your offer. You, you call them, you know. Hey, Bob, how's it going? They pick up, they're at the office. You've called their office. I'm, Bob, how's it going? Blah, blah, blah. We haven't talked for a little bit. You know, how's life treating you? How's work over there in insurance? You ask them questions about them, right? Now, if they haven't made an excuse and bounced off the phone, you basically are wide open. Hey, Bob, you know what? The office number is the only one that number that I got. I think I lost your mobile number. What was your mobile number again? They'll just give it to you. But if you haven't asked, you, you, you don't really, there's no sense really keeping that name as part of your sphere if you don't have all of the information in there. Email address, okay? You're gonna leverage this in your CRM as well, right? We, we always have something that we email. So a text message will have to be brief messaging. An email can be longer messaging. So obviously you need their email address. You need their email address to follow up with them on any commitments you make, right? There's always, I mean, think about your, what's your, your, if you're in real estate, what is your script at an open house for obtaining somebody's mobile and email address? You know, think of, think of those scripts, but there's no reason not to have their email address. Here is another um, reason to have it. And, and probably one of the most important. Most CRMs nowadays have an automatic market update feature built into them. Real estate agents, hear this loud and clear. The most important email, the one that's going to get the most opens and the most click-throughs are the market updates. If you are with KW and have access to command, that CRM will actually do a neighborhood update. You're giving, you are sending or pushing to your sphere 
information about the real estate market because you're a realtor, right? Let the baker send them cookie recipes. Let a house cleaner send them tips about spring cleaning, right? Let bartenders send their sphere drinks. All of these things that I see in newsletters, right? Because when you write a newsletter, they tell you, put something fun and non-real estate in there. People want to know about the value of their home. If they're a homeowner, they want to know where the housing market is going. And so once a month, these CRMs have a built-in email. You can literally, if you have an email address, toggle a little button over and the most well-received email goes out automatically on a monthly basis. Now, I'm not knocking doing a newsletter. Don't mishear me. But I'm telling you, the email that gets open the most and gets the most click-throughs is about the market. If you have conversion, right? Um, it's called KV Core now. So if you have KV Core, their market update allows the client to click through and go to a website, right? My website, which is fantastic because now as they look for homes on my website, I can see everything they're doing. So it's a lead generator as well. Or it's just a way that I can track somebody's activity. It's tracked passively. I'm not doing anything. But when I log into KV Core in my dashboard, I can go to a list of the most the, the people in my sphere who are most actively searching. And I can tell you, there are names of soccer moms that come up on that list, right? I coach their little girl who played soccer with my little girl, who I send this email to monthly. And they're out searching for, you know, they're looking at six, seven homes a day. I would have never known that on my own. So now I have a motivation to what? Call them up. Hey, how you guys doing? How's your daughter, right? Always lead with the personal and then get into the house part of it. But every time I have the opportunity to do that using KV Core, that's a sale I would have missed without using KV Core. That's a sale I would have missed. If I didn't have a CRM, that sale, that sale would have passed right by me. Home addresses. Does anybody know the, how often the average millennial checks their mailbox? Does anybody have an idea on that one? How often does the average millennial check their mailbox over the course of a month? About twice. <laughs> That's exactly right. About twice. Yep. One to two, not two to three, one to two times a month that they look for their snail mail. That's it. When they look, when they go get their mail, their main priority is to what? Oh, throw it away. <laughs> get clear out their mailbox. Basically, the only reason they go to their mailbox is to clear it out. Do you guys know what they keep when they clear out their mailbox? Cards. Cards. Handwritten stuff. Doesn't even have to be handwritten. If it looks like a card, they open it for the most part. The bills, <laughs> because they have to. <laughs> they throw away the bills. Nope, they throw them yeah, away. They, they, they throw, throw the bills away. Everything's just, online. They do everything online, so everything gets thrown away but cards and checks. Two things they keep. Anything that looks like a check and anything that looks like a personal card. So cards are an opportunity for you to communicate with your sphere in a way that most agents don't, that most people don't anymore. And that's what brings us to birthdays and home anniversaries. 
your opportunity on somebody's birthday or home anniversary is to send them a card. It's a reason to send them a card beyond Christmas, right? You have an opportunity if you know their birthday or home anniversary to send them a card. There is, there are still people on the face of this planet who open, who check their mail and actually open it almost daily. How old is the youngest person doing that right now? On app, this is averages. How old they call in marketing terms? They're called responsible mail readers, and they check their mailbox every day, every few days, but they generally open something that looks like a bill, you know, what, how, how old do you think is the youngest responsible mail reader? About 47. Hmm. 55. Oh. 55. Yeah. 47, not a bad guess though. Yeah, they're 55. So when you send postcards to every mailbox, in a neighborhood, please understand that per, basically every 54 year old and younger is basically tossing that. That three second rule about food dropping to the floor, that's how long your direct mailer lasts. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying don't do direct mail, but I am telling you that something that looks like a card is more effective, it, it is more likely to get open. But if you have a listing in a neighborhood and you do direct mail, right? And you do some sort of social media advertising, you're likely to get business from the overall exposure, right? So you're just peppering a neighborhood, you're peppering in an area, you know, like Alpharetta and Johns Creek and Roswell with social media. But then within those areas, you have specific neighborhoods that you're farming. So direct mail can, you know, in people's mailbox once a month, that's a way to do it. Plus you've got signs in some of those yards. The repeated exposure is what's likely to generate your business. I'm just saying, if you direct mail independent of any other air cover that goes with the direct mail, most people 54 and younger are throwing that card away in three seconds. So have people's home address, it is still important. Also, another reason to have their home address is it, how do you send them a market update if you don't know where they live? What market do they care about? If you start sending me market updates about Roswell and I live in Alpharetta, I'm kind of going, huh, what's this all about? And you don't want to be sending five emails. I think he kind of lives up there. You know, it's kind of like Mableton, Smyrna, uh, I'll just put them on Vining, Smyrna, Mableton. Like you can't just, nobody wants five emails on all, all those different areas. Nobody wants generic information about Atlanta when they live in Alpharetta. So home address and to make your life easier when you click that little toggle button to send somebody automatical updates on the market, it, when you have a home address, it will, some of these CRMs auto assign people to a neighborhood or to a zip code right out of the home address. You don't even have to pick the area. Birthday cards are an amazing opportunity for touching somebody in a personal way, okay? How many birthday cards do you get, Michael? Hold up your fingers. We can see you. About three. Michael, you look, you know, like you're of the age too, where cards, there was no texting when you were younger, right? There was, right? Yeah, that's me. There were no, there was no texting. There was no Facebook to wish me happy birthday on. My peers are people who grew up without this. I get about four cards a year. Well, I get a little bit more, but I'll get to that in a minute. But I, I used to get about four cards a year before I, I started to change how I do things. Michelle, hold up your fingers. How many, how many cards? How many birthday cards? About three? 
the average guys is three to four birthday cards. The average person gets three to four birthday cards. Okay. Imagine if you send somebody a birthday card as a real estate agent. That's it. Do you think they're going to notice if you're one of the three or four that they get? You think that's noticeable? Especially if you take the time to handwrite it. Is that noticeable? I am not talking about a postcard, right? There are direct mailing services that you can upload your database of birthdays and they will send your people a postcard. Happy birthday. What do you guys do when you get a postcard from the dentist saying happy birthday? Whoop. Right? It doesn't has no impact on you. It's not handwritten, right? But they get it, it's an envelope. They open it, you've handwritten them a birthday card. If you are tracking people's birthdays on social media, you don't know it's their birthday until the day of, right? A CRM and having somebody's birthday gives you the opportunity to back up from it. So let me tell you my custom birthday program right? 10 days out, reminds Hutch to send a birthday card. Seven days out, Hutch gets another reminder. If he hasn't sent that birthday card yet, it's time to write it and get it out. Okay. Day before their birthday, reminder to call them and say happy birthday. Anybody want to guess why I call them the day before their birthday to say happy birthday? Want to take a guess? because nobody else is calling. Everybody's waiting till tomorrow. I'm the first. Hey man, happy birthday. Hey, Hutch, thanks man. Well, it's actually not till tomorrow. Wait, you don't think I know it's not till tomorrow? I know it's not till tomorrow. I'm calling you today to say happy birthday. I'm the first one, right? I mean, some guys I know pretty well. I'm like, I bet your mom hasn't even called you yet. I'm the first, you know, sort of thing. You got any big plans for tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, my smart plan, my campaign, sends them a text, but the text, I know it's, it's, it's obligatory because everybody else is sending them a text, so the CRM just sends out a text, but it's, it's buried. You know why? Because there's 100 people sending them a text on their birthday, and then there's a reminder for me to actually post happy birthday in social media. The difference is I generally don't post on their timeline like everybody else. You know how you get the birthday reminders in Facebook and you just go down and you, you wish some, everybody you know has a birthday today. You just wish them all happy birthday real quick. That goes into a combined timeline for them. I have a, an image that basically one for men, one for women says happy birthday and stuff. And I just replace their name. Instead of saying happy birthday, I'll say happy Tom day. Happy Tom day. Have a great one. But it's an image. When I upload that image to Facebook on their timeline, it's completely separate from all the other people who just write it in where their notification came up. So it's just another way to stand out. How many people do you think use a social media square to wish somebody a happy birthday? Not many, almost none. So there's a couple of opportunities around somebody's birthday to touch them in a unique way that's memorable. Most times I've sent the card in advance. So when I call the day before, they're like, Hutch, thanks for the card. They know it. Do you guys know why Disney does a parade and fireworks every single day? Does anybody read any of the customer service stuff from Disney and know why they do? There's a, 
Why well, have two parades a day and one big fireworks show? Sometimes two. Why do they do that? Disney has learned, as has the Four Seasons and a lot of the high-end hotel chains. It is not necessarily the number of touches that matter. It's the memorable ones that matter most. If you, you pay about $125 to spend the day at Disney in the heat with long lines, babies crying, people bumping up and, you know, to you, people keep moving your carriage, taking your stuff. It, it should be a little bit stressful. Disney's hope is that they've trained their cast members to treat you in a way that's memorable. But if you have not had any other memorable, memorable experience that day, there is a couple of over-the-top parades and an over-the-top fireworks show for them to try to make an impression on you. That's why the fireworks are at the end of the day. Fireworks are at the end of the day so that you leave afterwards going, ooh, ah, still in your head. Birthdays, think of your marketing plan in a similar way. It, it's not just about the number of touches. Research shows in order to get referrals out of your sphere that it's 36 touches, okay? I would tell you this, it's memorable touches and you can do fewer. Phone calls count way more than emails. Coffee counts way more than a phone call. So a smart campaign or, or a smart plan, right? Whatever you want to call them, that reminds you to call people at regular intervals. You're calling them to get them to meet with you and have coffee because you're moving them through the marketing pipeline. The marketing, the simplest marketing pipeline is be likable, be credible, be trustworthy or deepen your trust. If I send you a text, you cannot hear my tone of voice or see my body language. When I call you, you now can hear my tone of voice, which helps me understand you better. Trust is deepened, relationship got stronger. We sit down for coffee, you can see my body language, trust just got deeper because you know better that I'm speaking the truth because you can now hear my words, my tone of voice and see my body language. So by all means, there, there, you know, there, are, there are good guidelines, like 36 touches a year. That's a, that's a good guideline. But I, I would tell you, that some touches are much more important than others. Phone call, coffee, right? Those are your big ones. But recognizing somebody on their birthday, birthdays are personal, aren't they? When somebody remembers your birthday, that's kind of a big deal because birthdays are kind of important to you. If you haven't done it, if for some reason you happen to have a picture of that person or whatever, send that. Too. especially if you have one of you guys closing together. Send them a picture in that car. Drop a picture in there. Tell you, you do that, you got a customer for life. Send their child, remember their child's birthday and that he likes Spider-Man. And on his birthday, send a little Spider-Man from Amazon to the house, cost you $12. Spider-Man shows up with a little happy birthday, little Bobby. Woo! You better believe you're getting future business out of them, referrals or whatever. Absolutely. Last one, home anniversary cards. Guys, it does not matter whether you sold them a home or not. 
their, when they bought that home is in the tax record, look it up, add it to a home anniversary campaign. This is one where you can get away with not using a handwritten card. But if you do, right, more is the better. This is one where you can upload your home anniversary list to one of those card mailers and just have them on auto send. Have the text message in the campaign go out automatically. But I mean, even if you were working off of a spreadsheet, knowing people's home anniversary and just being able to send them a card, send them, it's just another opportunity to send them a card. Texting them, happy home anniversary. People aren't as particular about their home anniversary as they are about their birthday. So if you don't get it, their home, you know, if they, they bought their home June 2018 and they get a card sometime in June, they're, they're not going to quibble with it. But you know who's not sending them a card for their home anniversary? Michelle. Agent that sold it to them. Yep, you got it, Michelle. That's exactly who's not who's not sending them a card on their home anniversary is their agent who sold them the home. How I know that is that more than 80% of agents orphan their past clients. I built a whole business on adoption. You should too. Adopt them. They were orphaned. Pick them up. They're yours now. I want you to write this down. A smart plan, okay? This is a different kind of smart plan that I've been referring to, right? This is literally an acronym, SMART. Stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. When you write goals, this is the way to write them. A specific goal statement. It has to be measurable, right? Specific is not sell more homes this year. And then measurable being, well, more than last year. Those are relative terms. Specific is sell 24 homes this year. Measurable, right? By the end of 2023. And then you can put benchmarks. First quarter, six homes. Second quarter, 10 homes, so and so. It has to be achievable. There's no sense setting a goal of selling 100 homes if you only sold five last year. Relevant, in other words, it impacts your life in a specific way, write out how it's relevant. And then time bound, when you're gonna get it done. So I want you to do this for retrieving every name in your sphere. If they're on your phone, how, how are you going to download your phone? There, whether, I don't know if you guys know it, but there's an actually an app called, it's literally as simple as, it's called Export Contacts. <laughs> That's the app. I want to say it costs $2 for lifetime of use. It will pull every name off of your phone and throw it into a spreadsheet for you. Gmail, you can export from Gmail. It will pull every email out of your Gmail, your contacts, and throw it on a spreadsheet for you. That spreadsheet gives you something to combine and start working with and filling in all of the information you don't have. I cannot tell you how many people come to me and say, Hutch, you know this KV Core. Can you help me with KV Core? Before that, it was command, right? Before that, it was, um, oh gosh, I can't even remember what Ke Keller Williams used to use. There was another CRM though. If you don't have a spreadsheet with all the information we just discussed in it, it's a non-starter, guys. You literally have to have everybody's home address. No, but if you have nobody's home address, stick with the spreadsheet and start getting those home addresses in there. And if you're afraid to call people and ask them what their home address is, because I had somebody say, I, that, that, no lie, I had an agent, this guy was like, I'm just looking them all up in the tax system. You don't like talking to people? This might not be the business for you, pal. Mm -hmm. Remember what I said about likable, credible, trustworthy. 
you're not getting to step three in the marketing pipeline without speaking to people. So this go through, there is an agent with Keller Williams. She saw a 24% increase from 2018 to 2019 because she literally called everybody she knew and filled in all the information we just discussed. She took my class. She went out, made her spreadsheet. She called everybody on that spreadsheet and filled in all of the information. But because she called her entire sphere over a three month period, she saw a 24% increase in sales that year. For talking to people she knows. It's not a bad reward for talking to people you know, right? That, mind you, that 24% was before we put anything into a CRM. That was literally just working off a spreadsheet. She saw another double digit increase the following year after we got her right in command. All right, guys, we're wrapping up here. So what questions do you have? That's one thing I always ask is we sometimes we get I don't want to call it information overload, but the, um, I always say, where do you start? What is uh, what would be your advice for the first place to jump in and get started? The first thing I would do is export my phone and have that spreadsheet and start going through that spreadsheet. The first, so step one, export your phone. You now have a spreadsheet. Step two, delete every single name on there that you have no intention of marketing to. Like if you're not going to call them, just delete all of those people. We all know, you know, Uncle Bob from Minnesota who, you know, lives in a cabin and eats fig leaves. He's in your phone, but you're not going to try to market to him. Delete him. First thing I would do. So now I have a more manageable list. And then I would step three, begin the process of contacting every one of those people and filling in the six pieces of information we just talked about. Go ahead, Michelle. Um, what would you say is the best CRM uh, for the money? Uh, yeah, I get the C, a CRM, I get this a lot. The CRM choices are, it's, it depends on the person, right? So it depends on how complicated or how easy do you want to do this, right? The, the, if, have you heard of Brian Buffini, Michelle? Who? Brian Buffini? No. Okay. Brian Buffini has a big national coaching program that has now partnered with the National Association of Realtors. They have a CRM called oh, something makers. But if you look up Buffini CRM on Google, it'll tell you, but it's something makers. Spell, oh. spell that, spell Buffini. Buffini is B-U-F-F-I-N-I. -F -F -I. Okay. I had something. I think it's referral maker by Buffini. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. I'm sorry I drew a block. It is called referral maker. That's exactly okay. what it's called. So it's referral maker. Referral maker, I want to say, is $25 a month. And uh, maybe, you know, as a National Association of Realtors member, if you are, um, you might get some sort of discount even from that. Um, it is a very simple CRM. There is not a lot of automation, but it does give you the ability to have all those names, number addresses, you know, birthdays, all of that in one place. And it also allows you to tag people. So you get to, one of the things we haven't talked about is tagging and labeling, and uh, that'll be a future topic, but Tagging and labeling helps you segregate your database into people with common interests and, and, and people that are your bigger priorities, right? If Doug refers 
three names to you a month and Hutch refers zero names to you per month, who's more important, Doug or Hutch? I mean, to your business, right, Michelle? This is no exactly. mom, but my mom is not a high proximity to my business. My mom is, is super important to me personally, but you know, when it comes to marketing and, and proximity to my business, she doesn't refer to me. So to my business, she's not as important. Personally, she's hugely important. So referral maker allow you to do that. Um, KV core tends to get a little pricey. Uh, Brevity is another one that can be a little pricey, but is great. Brevity is made for real estate agent. KV core is made for real estate agent. They can be pricey, but I would look at what plans they have to offer. Again, mm -hmm. that's another, that's a Porsche, that's half a class that I do. There's, I spend about 20 minutes talking on some of the differences. But I would start referral makers, the simple one, KV Core or Brevity, a little, you can grow with, right? You can grow with those two. Uh, Chloe, Bonnie, do you guys have any questions? Uh, I do. Oh, okay. Shoot. Uh, you mentioned early on uh, a couple of things. One being likable, trusting, and it was something else. It's be likable, credible, and trustworthy. Okay. So it's the marketing pipeline. It's one of the people, you ever work with a buyer who never refers anybody to you ever? That's because you're not trustworthy in their okay. opinion. Not that you're not, Michael. It's that you haven't established enough trust with that individual for them to start referring to you. So you, you guys have to, we all have to think of it in those terms. There is only one reason why people aren't referring us business is because they do not consider us trustworthy enough to do so. If they did, they'd be referring to you. The other, the one other part of that is you're probably not asking either. So you can't blame them for not referring you business if you're not asking for the business. Absolutely. Because there's a lot of people who just think you're, there are people who trust you, Michael, who think that you're so successful, you're too busy to handle their friend's child's purchase. They, they never give you the option, right? They're like, oh, man, that Michael is a rock star at real estate. He wouldn't want to help my child find a $350,000 home or my friend's child. So you have to make sure that they know that you're available to help everybody and you have to ask for the business. But yeah, likable is easy. People, believe it or not, with, uh, like, let me put it this way. My first client, we all had them, right? So my very first home sale eight years ago, or yeah, home sale and buy. Those people, I, it was a buy sell. I listed their home. They never once asked me how many homes I'd sold. Testimonials, nothing. Why? They did business with me because they liked me. That's rare on a listing. People will often buy a home with you, but it's rare on a listing that you haven't at least had to establish your bona fides, right? Bona fides. That you haven't had to establish testimonials, past history of success. But even that's only the second part of the equation. The third part is trust. And you'll gain that by meeting with them or at least asking them to meet with you. Obviously, everybody, you know, all the calls I make during the week, I ask people to meet me for, I have a time block, Friday morning and Friday afternoon for uh, coffee and lunches. That's every Friday for me. It's all coffee and lunches. I mean, I'm like wired on caffeine by the end of the day. But that's, that's the point of every call I make Monday through Thursday is to get people to meet with me Friday for coffee or lunch or a snack or a beer. That's that's the whole point of my call, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Sorry, I'm a new agent and I don't have much to add, but um, I really like, I have KV Core, I'm with Maximum One and um, I want to learn how to utilize, <clears throat> sorry, utilize the market updates to really bring people into my website so that's 
I still have to figure it out, but I, I like I like knowing that that's a possibility with KV Core. Um, I haven't really thought about market updates being so such a big uh, clicking item, but that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So Zillow is the one who discovered that, right? Because when Zillow um, launched, nobody went to their website unless they were within months of buying or selling a home. That was the only usage that Zillow was getting. So a two-pronged attack. They came up with the Z estimate, right? That was one. And then they started emailing people basically their zip code information. And so what that did, what, what those emails did was drove three, four, five visits to their website from people who were still years away from buying or selling. And, and they had never got, they basically got, if I was five years away from buying a house, I was like, what do I need Zillow for? So I just never, I was aware of them. I just never went there because there was no reason. I'm not, but the Z estimate, what that did was it's like a 401k account. People just like to check the balance. They're not really selling their home, but they just like to check their equity, right? So thus the Z estimate, when that was combined with that email that goes out every month from them on uh, market updates, they found that people actually it drove traffic to their website for people who were not even thinking about buying or selling a home. So they're the ones that came up with it. Now most major CRMs have it. KV Core, when you enter a name, you'll see in the far right-hand column, there is a little toggle for market updates. Turn the toggle on, type in the zip code, and you're off to the, and you can set the, you know, seven days, 14 days, 21 or 28. You get to pick how often it goes out. I would not pepper people's uh, inboxes with market updates. Once a month is good. Once a month is good. Unless they're actively searching. Once a month is good. All right. Well, Hutch, I will throw out, uh, uh, thank you for being our guest on our show today. We really appreciate your time and your insights and your presentation. We will, uh, we do record our Zoom presentations. We will um, clean them up. We just cut the end and the beginning and put the credits and the music and whatnot, make them nice and professional. We'll put them on our YouTube channel and share the link with you. So you have the ability to come back and review the material later or share it with friends. But Hutch, uh, thanks again for, uh, for being our guest today. And for everyone else, thank you for joining us today and giving us your time. And we look forward to seeing you at the closing table soon. Thanks again and have a great day today and good luck with uh, helping everyone making their real estate dreams come true.